Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use some front-end form validation techniques in your Ionic framework uh, Android and iOS mobile application. So, generally, what you when you when you want to validate uh, form data, what you do is you you generally validate it after the user has submitted. Uh, but that can often uh, result in some poor user experiences, depending on how you've done your implementation. Uh, instead, what what you want to do additionally is you can actually um, add some front-end validation techniques. Uh, so typically, if you were using a, a PC and uh, you were expecting uh, people on the web, like uh, with their web browser, to visit your site, you'd use maybe HTML5 validators uh, to validate your front-end. But with mobile, that looks pretty ugly, and you'll probably get a lot of people hitting your app if you decide to use HTML5 validators. So luckily, uh, AngularJS ships with, with its own validators that you can use, and they work a whole lot better uh, than HTML5. And, and it'll definitely build upon your overall user experience. And uh, often, user experience uh, is is much more important than the actual function of your app. So you, you could have a, an average app, but if it has a really pleasant user experience, uh, that takes priority definitely. So let's go ahead and start by creating a fresh uh, Ionic Framework project on our desktop. So it'll just take a second to create it. Almost done. All right. With the project created, let's go ahead and navigate into it. And we're going to go ahead and add a build platform. So in this case, I'm adding iOS. This tutorial does work for both iOS and Android. Uh, you can go ahead and, and use both. Uh, this time, usually, if you've been watching my other tutorials, I usually use Android. I'm going to switch it up this time, take a break from Android and, and build for iOS. Just give you, show you that it works for both. Uh, so with that created, the good thing about this project is you won't need any further libraries. Everything that ships with Ionic uh, is all you need. So let's go ahead and open our uh, project that we just created. Uh, it should be on our desktop. All right, so I just opened it with my text editor. I'm going to navigate into the index.html file of my project found in the www folder and I'm going to start adding a form. Uh, this form is going to go inside of the ion content tag. So this is this is going to be a very very basic um, application so don't expect too much of it it's just to demonstrate uh, the power of AngularJS validators. So we're going to say form name we're going to give it a name. It's very important that you give it a name so I'm going to call it my form and I'm going to say no validate. So by giving the no validate tag, um, that means that you don't want HTML5 to kick in. So you don't want HTML5 doing all this dirty work because it's going to look ugly. So let's go ahead and close the form tag. And we're going to create a list. So we're just going to do some basic Ionic styling here. Uh, give it a, a label here. Oops. All right, now this is where the important stuff comes in. So we're making our input tag here. This time it's going to be a type of email. 
So we are using HTML type uh, inputs, but we're just not using the HTML5 validators. So we're given a type of email. We're giving it a name called username. We're using ng model, and we're also calling that username for any data that we want to pass into our a, a controller. We're saying ng min length equals five. So uh, the validator will have to check to make sure that our length is five characters or greater. And we're also saying that it's required. And then we're closing that off. So in an effort to save me some typing here, I'm actually gonna just copy this and paste it. And this time we're gonna call it password. And the input box is going to be a password type. We're going to rename the name and as well as the model. This time we're just going to change it up a bit and say that we need six characters in order to be valid. And of course it's going to be required again. So with that said and done, uh, after the labels, uh, what we can do is we can create a um, button. So let's say div class, we're going to give it some padding because it's going to look ugly if we don't. And we're going to say button class equals button, button block, and button positive for the color. Uh, so as far as validators go, we want to say ng disabled. I'm sorry, disabled. Uh, and then we want to give it a boolean statement in order because the ng disabled if it's true then the button will be disabled it'll be present but it won't be clickable so we need to give it a, a situation where it's valid or invalid so what we're going to do is we're going to say my form dot invalid so by saying that all of our rules uh, must be valid otherwise it's going to be invalid and then we're going to say ng click equals submit and we'll create our controller later we'll just call it uh, we'll call it uh, username because we'll pass in the username of the of the form we'll say submit and we'll close it off all right so we have our form it, it we have our uh, we have our validators on each of the input fields as well as the button but we aren't necessarily displaying anything. So it's kind of useless as far as the front end right now. So what we need to do is we need to add uh, some output. So we're going to say div class equals padding. Again, you could, you could have added it to the same class as the button, but uh, we, don't, we don't really care. And I don't know why I just called it button. It's actually div. All right. So now we're going to add a few uh, outputs depending on the status of the validator. So we're going to say PNG show. So it's only going to show if it's true. So in this case, we're going to say uh, we're going to check to see if the field is populated because remember, username is required. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the following: my form dot username dot error dot required. So if that's depending on the status, if that's true. Uh, that means there was an error because we haven't filled in our required statement. Uh, so we're going to say, for example, username is required. All right. So the next thing we want to do for the username is we want to say png show my form dot username. And the next thing that we can check is we can check to see if it's a valid email field. So what we can do is we can say invalid because it, it does pay attention to the fact that we're using type email. So if it's not an email, it's going to be invalid. But we don't want to throw a false alarm in case they haven't uh, given focus to the field. So we want to say um, if it's invalid and uh, it's not pristine. So what we can do is uh, not my form dot username dot pristine. So pristine means that uh, it hasn't been used. 
So uh, by saying not pristine, we're saying that it has been used and it's invalid. So you could you could also use the dirty command. It's up to you. We'll we'll, we'll discuss that in a second. But in this case, we're going to say username must be a valid email. All right. So the final validator on on username would be something like this. So ng show equals my form dot username dot error dot min length. So remember, we set a min length of five. So if this throws an error, we'll say the we'll say username must be min length of five characters. All right, so we just did our three possible validators for username. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this because we're going to use most of them for the password here. So instead, I'm going to say password instead of username. Uh, we're going to remove the um, whole check on whether it's an email because password doesn't suffer from that. We're going to say password. And the min length, we're also going to say password is required, and password must be min length of six characters. So I just saved it. Uh, what we're going to do now is remember I, I created this ng click uh, for a function and a controller that doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and, and go to the ion content. We're going to say ng controller equals example controller. And we're going to go ahead and create that controller and that function right now. So open up your JS and then app.js and we're going to create that controller. I'm going to inject a scope. And we're going to say scope.submit equals function. We're going to say username. And we're going to say alert hello username. All right. So let's uh, let's take a look at and see what this is in action. So this this is actually one of the few projects that I that I make uh, that allows you to uh, test it in a web browser. So if you go to index.html and choose to open it with your web browser, you'll see that the username is required. The button is grayed out. Uh, if I type in something for username, the um, validators change on the fly. And of course, it's not a valid email. Start changing stuff. Um, of course, that's not a valid email, but at least it's identified it, that we need the at symbol. And then, of course, the submit button is now no longer disabled. And if I click it, it'll say hello and then the username. So we can validate that uh, in our simulator now. So I'm going to do ionic build iOS. And I'm going to say Ionic Emulate iOS. Let that boot up for a second. And as you can see, it looks it looks pretty consistent here. So testing. And of course, it's uh, it's updating exactly how it should. So as you can see, uh, we added some nice nice looking validators, very easy to use. I do recommend that you validate your data uh, through your through your controller as well. Don't rely heavily on the front end. The front end is just to improve your user experience. Uh, but as we know, users can type bad data in. Uh, they can find ways to bypass the front end. Uh, it's, it's just as common in apps as it is on the web.
So it's always a good idea to validate your data through, through your backend.